file. So we started chapter 18. We read first two shlokas, I remember, yes? Something like this. So 18 chapter is, 18th chapter is the last one. So it starts with this, Arjuna Vacha, Sanyasa Sya Mahabaho Tattvam Ichami Veditum, Tyagasya Cha Arashi Kesha, Prithag Keshini Shudana. Keshini Shudana is his name. Um, I want to know, O oh Krishna, yes, Arjuna said, I desire, O oh mighty arm, to know the principle of sannyasa and the principle of tiyaga, O oh Rishi Kesha, and their difference. Interestingly, that he already, uh, Arjuna somehow suggests to Krishna w where he has to go and what distinction he is to make in his own question, you know make a distinction between sannyasa and tyaga. It's only Krishna does this, this, as if he remembered it from before he was already making, now he wants to know it again, kind of remind me of that what you did before. He never did, in, this is first time he will be speaking on tyaga. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Kam yanam karmanam nyasam sanyasam kavayo viduh sarva karma palatyagam prahuh tyagam vichakshanaha. So the Blessed Lord said, sages have known as sanyasa the physical depositing or laying aside of desirable actions. Tyaga is the name given by the wise to an entire ab abandonment of all attached clinging to the fruit of works. Sannyasa is well known also in Indian tradition of tapasvins. You know what they do, they for example collect the berries, uh, they are very hungry, very living in the forest. They collect berries and look at them without eating, yes, because they want to eat. So <laughs> they don't eat because they want to eat. <laughs> this type of uh, training of the will against one's own desire. So, but Sri Krishna sees it very differently. It's uh, freedom from attachment to the result of action. And here he will be explaining this in more details. We didn't read this. Tyajyam doshavat ityeke karma prahuf manishinach. Yajnyadana tapach karma natyajyam iti chapare. So some people say that. Uh, the whole karma has to be left, iti eke, some people say, should be left, tyajyam, doshavat, as if it is a mistake. Every action is a mistake, and therefore it should be left behind. But others say that yajnyadana tapah karma nat yajyam should not be left. So what karma should not be left is sacrifice, giving, tapasya, concentrated effort, and action. Nishyayam shrinu me tatra tyage bharata sattama tyago hi purusha vyadhara sorry vyagra trividhah sam prakirtitah Here my conclusions as to the renunciation tyaga about tyaga or best of bharatas bharata sattama Since renunciation of works o tiger of man has been explained as threefold, trividhah, samprakirtitah. So there are three types of renunciation. There will be, of course, tamasic, rajasic, and sattvic, tyaga. Yajnyadana tapah karma natyajyam 
karjam evatat. Yajinyo danam tapachchaiva pavanani manishinam. So the yajinyo dana and tapach action should not be left, should be done. Thus it is. Yajinyo danam and tapach pavanani are purifying the wise manishinam. So the acts of sacrifice giving in ascesis, ascesis ought not to be renounced at all, but should be performed, for they purify the wise. Etani api tu karmani sangam tiaktva palanicha kartavyani iti kartavyani ti me partha nishchitam matamuttamam and this is my highest thought matamuttamam decisive thought opartha these actions having left the attachment to the fruit should be done Shri Bindutana says even these actions certainly ought to be done opartha leaving aside attachment and fruit I will go a little bit further and then we will stop and discuss and read what Sri Aurobindo says in the notes. Niyatasya tu sanyasah karmano no papadyate mohat tasya parityagah tamasav parikirtitah. So it is called tamasik tiaga. Parityagah tamasah parikirtitah. What is tamasic tiaga? It is verily renunciation of rightly regulated actions is not proper to renounce them from ignorance is a tamasic renunciation. I will read uh, what um, the text says. Niyatasya, prescribed or regular action, karmanach, of the regular action, uh, sannyasa, renunciation, no papadyate should not be performed. Mohat tasya parityagah. But um, leaving it from because of moha, because of bewilderment, is called the tiaga, which is tamasic. We can imagine what it could be, yes, in life. Uh, let us read Rajasic and it will help us. Dukham ityeva. Yat karma, kaya klesha bhayat yajet, sakritva raja sam tiagam, naiva tiaga phalam labhet. Dukham, difficult, itieva, thus indeed, yat karma, which karma, kaya klesha bhayat yajet, one leaves because of difficulties, fear and straining or uh, trouble to the flesh, as Sri Aurobindo translates, Sakritva Rajasam Tiagam. He does the Rajasic renunciation. Naiva Tiaga Phalam Labhet. Obtain is not the fruit of renunciation. So in this way, when we leave the because of bewilderment uh, of some kind, you know, that you should not follow the prescribed action in life. For example, you have the duty to, to take care of your children, of your, I don't know, cats. I have a duty to take care of our cats, mm, to feed them, to clean their poop. <laughs> so... I cannot leave it and say, you know, I am Yagi, I have nothing to do. No, I have to do this. So, but if by some mistake, I would kind of think of myself as something very great being who is not to touch lower action because of more, then it will be tamasic renunciation. Yeah? It's a stupid comparison. Can be better done. Something more appropriate for this. 
you can think of it, what could be the tamasic renunciation because of bewilderment one leaves the duty, the action which one must perform. Uh, I can see this uh, in this uh, war between Russia and Ukraine, that many Russians found their refuge in the pacifistic movement. We are, you know, we are neither for these nor for that. We, like in India it was also, when uh, when there was Second World War, and many people did not understand Sri Aurobindo, why he took the stand for British, though there was a British Empire, and India was in the British Empire. They didn't understand this, yeah? So, this pacifistic movement is actually giving more scope and place for the wrong force to possess the humanity. There has to be a resistance, and this resistance has to be performed, and this is the right action. But because of some bewilderment, fear, fear is rajasic, but because of some idea that I am for some higher life, and I would not tell my thought or my position, I will not show because, you know, because I am not belonging to this lower kind of re relations. Then this is a better example of Tomasic. And there are too many of such people. My friends are all like this. They do not take a right stand yeah, against evil. And uh, Rajasik will be fear, fear to be engaged, fear to be judged, um, causing a lot of trouble for the body, maybe misunderstandings, so better I leave it. Yeah. So, but it is not leaving, uh, leading us to the fruit of renunciation, to the real re result. Hmm? So, implied, can I ask a question? Yes, definitely. Give examples also. So, um, I'm just trying to understand, that means he says there is a fruit of renunciation too, just like there is a fruit of the works, and he says um, we should not aspire for the fruit of our work. Similarly, when there is a fruit of renunciation, he's talking about it here. Yes, <laughs> you got <laughs> us, you got him. <laughs> He should uh, correct his language, yeah? but he uses here palam as a result of tiaga. So, what is the result of real tiaga? Is is actually finding of oneself, yes, discovering the true being. So, the action can lead us to the discovery of our unborn self. He will speak about this in the next. You will see, he will propose how to do sattvic renunciation. Now sattvic will come and uh, maybe that will explain. Because the fruit of renunciation is actually we all are looking for. We want it. Yeah. Maybe in Buddhistic tradition it's a bit uh, differently framed. I remember when I studied Buddhism, I was also very much in influenced by Buddhism and long period of my life I was in Buddhistic kind of framework. And uh, I remember what struck me is that, that you have to leave only one desire, the desire of freedom, you know, of nirvana, of becoming, of stepping out of the... <clears throat> and then when everything, all the desires are destroyed, this last one desire keeping with, you have to also let go. And that will be the nirvanic period, the experience. So even the last desire you have to let go. Most probably that's why you are asking about this. Is there a desire for the fruit, <laughs> for the <laughs> renunciation? <laughs> yeah. Yes? Um. I don't know if I was meaning that, but it seemed uh, like he's telling us not to um, go after the fruit of the work, but there is a fruit of renunciation, which uh, one should look for perhaps, but is not getting through tamas or through rajas. I don't know, we haven't read sattva, so I have no idea, but uh, there is some fruit of uh, renunciation, which 
maybe desirable? Yes. Uh, so to get to that desirable fruit of renunciation, we should do something, get rid of desire. <laughs> so same as in Buddhism. Here it is, the karyam ityeva yat karma niyatam kriyate arjuna sangam tyaktva phalam chaiva satyagak satvikom matah. This, the he who performs a rightly regulated action, it's an important, this rightly regulated, interesting, because it has to be done and not because of anything else, without any attachment either to the action or to the fruit of the action, that renunciation is regarded as sattvic. I know, it's very boring life from the point of view of the vital being engaged, yes. Uh, no excitement, no desire, no anything. Just do the mechanical, like robot, everything, <laughs> because it has to be done. <laughs> But notice, it is not so, I'm kind of exaggerating, because it, uh, something in our vital tells us this all the time. What? Again? No, I can't do it. I need the meaning of life. I need some excitement. Some, uh, you know. And here, it's like a robot. But it is not true if we are kind of awakening to the spirit. If we have the touch of the spirit, it is just the opposite. It is the way to really get rid of those remnants of past activities, of our habits to act. This is the suggestion how to clean up those habits and remnants and be free and hold on to the spirit because it's very difficult to hold on to it. Yeah. So, or to allow it to act through us. So one needs to do this performance. One needs to become free from attachment and fruit of action. Uh, and that is the real sattvic tiaga, which may lead us to purification of our nature, and that purification will be the cause of the self-discovery. It's not that we immediately come to the self, it will be a process, long repetition, long practice of this will lead us to this um, desired act, uh, fruit of renunciation. Nadveshti akushalam karma, nadveshtya kushalam karma, kushale nanushajjate tyagi sattva samad vishtah. Medhavi chinna samshayach. This is the description of sattvic renunciation. Nadveshti. He is not, hmm, how to say, what Rabbinu says, Jesus, has no aversion yeah, to unpleasant action. Akushalam karma. He is not, literally, he is not hating the imperfect work. How many of us <laughs> can do this, <laughs> not to hate Im imperfect work. It's very difficult. <laughs> A little imperfection and we are judging it within ourselves, about ourselves, about others. So, not to hate the imperfect work and in the perfect also not to be attached. Oh, this is a super duper very nice work. Let me do it. I want to do it. It works so well. It goes so right. Yeah. So neither no. Tyagi sattva sama vishta. This tyagin, this one who renouncing, is uh, charged with sattva. Medhavi. He is wise. Chinna samshayah. He dispelled or destroyed the all the doubts. He has no doubts anymore. He is not stuck with a good action, nor he is uh, uh, cursing the wrong action. 
well, it's it sounds like impossible when you think of your life. <laughs> There's such a habitual reaction in the vital, in the mind. Even if we don't say it, we train ourselves not to. Um, and still, there is you can feel those reactions. It's not about and kind of showing it or performing this thing. It's about really being it. You know? It's about disciplining the vital and uh, overcoming egoistic preferences. It's a constant training, I guess. Yeah, kind of, kind of. I, I don't know, truly speaking, till the end. I think this is the training and it is something altogether different level of being. There was a very interesting story in a Sufi tradition about one great ascetic, ascetic who lived in the mountains and everybody um, knew about him, that he was pure and wise, that his desires were not uh, he conquered his desires, and on his heart in the mountains, he wrote the Hafiz, his name was Hafiz. Hafiz conquered the desire for wealth, and he lived in poverty. You come inside, and there were all the weapons on the wall, and it was written, Hafiz conquered the desire to uh, to fight. Yeah? And everywhere there were all kind of spells written in his heart around that he conquered this, he conquered that. And then in the story they sent the very beautiful Nurmagal. Nurmagal was the beauty uh, kind of lady. And Nurmagal came to Hafiz and Hafiz fell in love with her. And in the morning he woke up. And he saw that everybody was, Nurmagal came out and was telling to the crowd, look, Hafiz is totally fell at my feet, my beauty, <laughs> making, mocking him, making fun of him. <laughs> and all those, you know, arrows which were in the, on the wall and all those uh, weapons and uh, spears flew into the crowd. <laughs> And the lake became red in the blood. <laughs> and then Hafiz jumped from that uh, top of the rock into the water on which it was written, Hafiz conquered the desire for love. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is a very good story <laughs> to know how it is to conquer desire for anything. <laughs> so a little extra. And by the way, all the great ascetics in the Veda, Vishwamitra fell for Menaka, as you know, and lived with her a thousand years in Himalayas, forgetting time because she was so beautiful, Apsarasa, and so on. So there is always a way, some way to, to seduce the spirit to this earthly life. So I guess discipline may help <laughs> to a certain moment <laughs> and then there has to be some kind of realization and that realization is not because i conquered the desire but because actually it is not attracting me anymore somewhere mother explains this when the desire itself leaves you not interested <laughs> to deal with you <laughs> because uh, you had nothing you know, nothing triggers in you, no interest towards that desire. This is, I think, the only way to get rid of it. Otherwise, there will be always some corner, somewhere, which may trigger the response. Sorry to be so pessimistic, but uh, sometimes one has to be realistic also. So the one who is not hating the improper action, imperfect action, is not attached to the perfect one. He is wise. He destroyed the doubt. So this is the freedom. 
there is no good or bad. Hafiz was wrong in one way. He wanted to be good against the bad. And that is always catching up with us. Yeah? It has to be neither nor. There has to be total disinterestedness in both. So, nahi deha bharita shakyam tyaktum karmani asheshatah yastu karma palatyagi satyagi iti abhidhiyate iti abhidhiyate. Um, by the one who has the body, uh, to leave the karmas, all the karmas, is impossible. Nor indeed can embodied being renounce all works. Verily, he who gives up the fruit of action, he is said to be a renouncer. How can one leave all the works, all the actions, if one is in the body? Body itself demands activity if one wants to live in it. We spoke about this not once, yes? You cannot arrive at non-action by doing nothing, as Krishna says. You have to do something for that. Anishtam ishtam mishramcha trividham karmanav palam bhavati atyaginam pretya natu sanyasinam this is interesting. Uh, the three kinds of result, pleasant, unpleasant, and mixed. In these or other worlds, in this or other life, are for the slaves of desire and ego. These things do not cling to the free spirit. So free spirit does not care either about desired or undesired or mixed between desired and undesired. It is not attracting the tiyagi. It is attracting atyagi, the one who is not renouncing. He will always find some interest in some way or another. Well, it's like I'm speaking about myself as if <laughs> I'm gonna interesting to see <laughs> there is always something somewhere in some form finds its way into your being and starts kind of talking to you, <laughs> proposing you the re the reconciliation. Let us reconcile. <laughs> Let's do both. Let's satisfy all parties. Let's be spiritual in every way. Yeah? Well, look at what uh, Sri Aurobindo had to put up with in the Alipur jail. Right. The, you know, the, the tapas of living in his little room, especially the way they, uh, the, the use of uh, um, for bodily elimination, <laughs> the the way he had to take care of, uh, of that was, uh, you know, pretty. pretty um, it's, it's a little. It's a story you don't want to tell in polite company. But he had complete uh, lack of uh, a complete sense of humor and detachment about it. Yeah, and how he lived in Pondi also, it was uh, before mother yeah. arrived. It was very basic life. Um, well, but in the Alipur jail... It was worse it, than basic, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, using the same plate for... Uh, yeah, this for, is the uh, thing which is always, yes, uh, striking people for the plate. Yeah. But not only the plate, the blanket, uh, the hot heat in this, in this, you know, yeah. it's huge. There is no air condition there, sorry, or uh, dirt, everything. It's not uh, fun to, to stay in those conditions. And still, you know, sometimes I think that when the divine takes everything from you, it leaves no chance, no choice for you but to turn towards the divine. When it gives too much resources, that means you're kind of allowed to do what you prefer. <laughs> Oops. 
Sometimes I think like this. Whenever the destiny strikes you, you start thinking about the divine intensely, mm -hmm. and you then want to come back to him. And you are even grateful for that, that the destiny strikes you. You're well, really that's, grateful. That's the positive response. The opposite is to go into all the... Uh, the, the what have you done? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, you know, so many addictions, you know, people are getting lost in drugs and and so forth, because they just can't deal with the world. It's a huge problem in all over the world now. It's getting worse. Yeah. This was for me, this shloka was for me striking. Three kinds of result, pleasant and unpleasant mix, in this or that other world, in this or other life, are for the slaves of desire and ego. They distinguish the desired, undesired, and mixed fruit of action. I want this, I don't want that. Um, okay, I can do both so in between. I'm better, more of this, less of that. This is all the framework of the ego, and uh, it's a, an entrapment for our soul. We will never find ourselves in this um, way. It's amazing. Hmm. Such a simple definition. Yeah? It's for, for the slaves of desire and ego. There are three types of result. Yeah, but if we didn't have that, we wouldn't be tested. You know, like Mother says, the purpose of evil is to, to test us, it, it, it make sure that we, we cover every little detail of uh, the purification. Right, right. Uh, yeah, for normal people, there is no question here. Mm -hmm. It's only for those who are seeking the divine, yes? Mm -hmm. The whole Gita is about those who are seeking the divine, right. and not for the ordinary people living in the world. Of course, there are three types of results, desired, undesired, and mixed, and this is a normal way of living. Nobody claims anything mm -hmm. here. But for the person who really wants to find the divine, this is the problem he has to solve. And then, Panchaitani Mahabaho Karman, I'm sorry, Karanani Nibodhame Sankhye Kritante Proktani Siddhaye Karma Sarva Karmanam. These five causes, O mighty armed, learn of me as laid down by Sankhya for the accomplishment of all works. And the, what are the causes or the karanas? Karana means the cause or the reason or the that which is causing the action. So five of them, here they are given. Adhishthanam tathakarta Karanam cha prithak vidham vividhascha prithak cheshtah daivam chaivatra panchamam. So five adhishthanam karta karanam uh, cheshtas and finally daivam. So adhishthanam is location or the body, the context in which or the embodiment in which we do the action, karta, the doer. Karanam, the doing, the instruments, various instruments, prithagvidam, and these instruments are indriyas, as we know, yeah, seeing, hearing, speaking, thinking, by which the work is done, and also karmendriyas, jnanendris and karmendriyas, vividhascha prithag cheshtag, and different types of efforts, and daivam. Daivam is the fate or destiny, something which is in the stars. Uh, so body is first the doer, interesting doer, he's here. And doer is not the self, not the true self. The doer is the nature, according to Krishna. Nature is doing, not you. Karanam, the instruments by which the doer is doing, the nature is doing and different efforts and the uh, fate. 
And here he says interesting thing. Shari Ravang Manobhih Yatkarma Prarabhate Naraha Prarabhate Narah Niyayam Va Viparitam Va Panchai Tetas Yahetavah. These are five hetus, five different causes. Before he said karana is a cause, now he says hetu is a cause. These two words mean the same thing. These five elements make up among them all the efficient causes, karanas, that determine the shaping, the outcome of whatever work man undertakes with mind and speech and body. So these are three major activities in our body, sharira, with all the karmendrias, vang, speech, what we say, and manas, what we think. Thinking, speaking, and acting in the body. By these, sharira vang manobhih, yat karma, that karma, which karma, prarabhate narah, the man begins, starts, acts upon nyayam va viparitam va, whether proper or improper, leading to the result or leading away from the result, doesn't matter. These five are the hetus, the, the causes. What it tells me, tells me something which is not written here. One can do all the activities by these three without being engaged psychologically. One has to train oneself to act with the body, to speak with the word, uh, and think with the mind without choosing the preference, the attachment of particular kind without making a choice what is right and what is wrong, without judgment in the mind, without judgment in the word, and without preference in the action. And if we do it, it's like robot a bit, yeah? We can do the same, we can speak what we think, everything, but without that attachment to the result, without leading them to the result, uh, without manipulating with words and thoughts and actions that it will be preferable uh, to us. This is what Mother says about sincerity. Yes? Sincerity is to speak, to do, to think things as they are without trying to make them profitable for yourself. Yeah? This is amazing. Try. She says, try to do it five minutes and you will see how difficult it is to be sincere. <laughs> because we are so used to get what we want. So all our um, design of our character is made in such a way that we know all the tricks. Yeah? How to be humble, for example, where it is needed. <laughs> and where it is not, we are not humble. <laughs> Yes. It's not about outer performance again. It's about your inner freedom. Can we get that inner freedom from all these forces which are constantly dominating our behavior? And then, Tatraivam sati karvataram atmanam kevalam tuyaha pashyati akrita buddhi Akrita buddhi tvan nasapashyati durmatih. Tatraivam, there in the thus, or in this way, that being so, he verily, who, owing to ignorant understanding, looks on the pure self as the doer, he of perverted intelligence sees not. 
the one who thinks or sees that the his self is the doer he has this perverted intelligence akrita buddhi tvat because of his not fulfilled not completed literally intelligence he has a wrong thought durmatih and he sees the the atman the his self as the actor we i i must say about myself that i see my atman as an actor <laughs> and uh, it's a normal thing many times a, a day i think the same thing you know that i am the actor i have to do better i i did wrong what did i do i'm so stupid i did this i did that mm. i have no will i have no this i am constantly judging myself working on myself you know mm. this is called, called working on yourself <laughs> gandhi for example he was constantly blaming himself all the time only himself not at anybody else judging himself and that was considered to be you know the spiritual behavior you don't judge others you judge yourself you look at yourself but this is not better than judging others really <laughs> It's on the same level. It leads nowhere. So the doer is actually nature, not the pure self. Absolutely. Nature is doing all. And the pure self is only the witness. For this, yes. For this uh, first stage, yes. it has to be recovered as shubhendu says as witness first because then we we will start seeing something else after and the attitude will change that pure witness will turn to be not a pure witness but first you have to have it you can't you yeah. can't really make the conclusion and that's the mistake we all made in integral yoga and I, i'm sure that many people from integral yoga know like robert about this that we believed too soon that the action can be done without really liberation yes of that purusha so we thought that we will be able to do the second stage of shri aurobindo's yoga without uh, completing the first i i actually believed so and uh, many of my friends and so on we have the same idea this is integral yoga it we are doing it for the divine but we are saying it for the divine but we are doing it imperfectly because we are not free we cannot really do it for the divine we are mixing into it all kind of things yeah, of nature Uh, and the, in this mixture we live and live and try to figure out what is what but the first has to be the self free from actions of nature has to be found and then there will be a change or uh, what do you call it adjustment then we will see that this self is not only a witness but also uh anumanta yes the one who gives sanction for nature but this is another stage first as in shri rubindo's yoga you remember first he realized he is a silent self silent brahman yes and he saw everything like in the movie he saw himself like in the movie yeah himself and others there was no thoughts in his mind and it was going on for months and months and then he was arrested and put into alipur jail and then there was a second stage of discovery that the divine gives sanctions that the divine is everywhere that he is not nobody that the divine is everywhere but for that you have to clean up the perception you have to clean up the consciousness to see that second stage there to stack back a minute 
to what you said about uh, how our actions are actually be done, being done imperfectly. We're not able to, to make it a complete sacrifice. I think that's why uh, Sri Krishna makes the point that um, all action has some imperfection, like every fire has some smoke. Mm. Yeah, imperfection is everywhere. That's, imperfection is in built into this body. So what can we do with this? Yeah. yeah so we shall we, have we to judge go, it. Yeah, we we have to go through the the, the action, uh, um, the selfless action, even though it's not completely selfless selfish at the time. We have to go through it and do it to the best of our ability in order to proceed. Yeah, yeah. And it is much more honest than to claim some divine providence and, you know, guidance yeah. where you are just selfishly <laughs> trying to gain some results for yourself. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, which is actually the case in many cases, which I know. And myself, I'm including, I'm not excluding. I see, I trace this in scene in myself also. These tendencies of the nature, of the vital, uh, they're rising, they're talking to you, you talk to them back, you know, you're always in dialogue with these forces, thoughts, with yourself. But uh, there, there must be order, some order in the system. You have to be in charge first before you reach to that, you know. So everything has its place, so to say. We don't need to judge. We are looking from the point of view of spiritual finding, of spiritual realization. In that sense, this is the obstacle. As Shubindo beautifully says, the ego was the helper, the ego is the bar. So the ego becomes a bar, though it was a helper before. Yes, Marta? No? Oh, yeah, I thought you wanted to say something. I didn't have any comment. I'm just uh, appreciating your quotation. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We learned a lot, but that doesn't help us in a realization of this idea. It needs, uh, I don't know what it needs. We inherited the body and the powers of nature, which are always dominating. We learned how to do things right within this given context, within this body. And unfortunately, to overcome that is not an easy task. Either it has to be a severe tapasya, as many did already, rishis, and, you know, saints went into Himalayas just to efface and erase all that and to jump into the spirit, but then they cannot come back. But Sri Aurobindo's yoga is even more difficult. Yeah? So we are learning from the Gita how Gita offers us. She tells us simple thing. Renounce the attachment and the fruit of action and live your life. Live as it is, because there is nothing good or bad in life. Life altogether is as it is, and it is done by the nature. You have to free yourself from that activity of nature. So therefore, do not attach yourself to the results and uh, to any modality of activities. Don't believe that you are the actors view everything as it is done by nature. See how the, the earth is rotating around the sun, how it is day and night are coming. Are you doing day and night? No. <laughs> uh, so you're falling asleep. Yeah. Are you falling asleep? No. <laughs> it's nature. <laughs> nature is falling asleep in your body, makes you sleep. Even if you don't want to sleep, you will fall asleep. And you will wake up, even if you don't want to wake up. So, we have to learn this lesson, I guess. And that leads us to that symbolic thinking that we will see that everything 
in this world is symbolically representing the spirit. Yeah? Nature is doing this, doing that, creating these forms, those forms, and they are all are nothing but the symbols of the spiritual relations, meanings, which are much deeper. We have to dive deeper to see those sanctions of the divine for nature's doings. And for that we need a scope of consciousness which we don't have because we are constantly engaged in what is right, what is wrong, what is wanted, what is not. All the energy of consciousness goes into that and disappears there. And we become narrow and small. Okay, we can stop here for today. If you have any thoughts, uh, it's seven o'clock in the night. Maybe no thoughts coming so late. Yeah? <laughs> Siegfried, you should have some thoughts. It's 12 o'clock in the night in your time, in your place. Or even more, one o'clock. Oh, God. Yes, one o'clock. Crazy. Uh, just, just wake Nature causes you, makes you sleep, and you fight against nature. <laughs> With the force of nature, you fight <laughs> the nature force. Yeah. Well, all right, then if no thoughts on this note, we can stop for today and reassemble next time and finish the chapter. Maybe in two sessions we will finish the whole chapter, or maybe more, three sessions. The chapter is quite long, 70 plus shlokas. But this is the crown of the whole Gita. It, he will put everything into the perspective for us to, to take with us. It's nice to stay with these thoughts and let it just be absorbed. Yeah. All right. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makashchit Dukha Bhag Bhavet Om Shanti 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 Namaste.